Hey guys, in today's quick tip video, I'm going to go over the split and the merge slash mixer blocks in the Helix and HX Stomp. I'm gonna be demoing this on my HX Stomp, but this is going to apply to anything in the Helix family. This is a powerful feature, and there are multiple ways that you can use this that some of you might not be aware of. So first of all, if you don't know how to get the separate paths, choose one of the blocks, hit action, and then flip this from path A to path B, and then it moves down. On the Helix, you just move the joystick down, and it'll move it down to a separate path. So this first one right here, the split, split point determines how the signal is going to hit the two paths. So you have a couple of different options in here. I'm going to go over all of them. So split Y means it's going to split the signal evenly to path A and path B. It hits the split point and then it processes in parallel. So it's going to go in through the input. It's going to hit this clean amp. And then what it'll do, you can process your delay and your reverb separately. So if you have it like this, that means the delay is going to hit the reverb. But if you do it like this, now they'll process separately. You really want to trust your ear for that on what sounds better. One of the common ways to use this is that you'll have just an amp up here, not amp and cab as this first block, and then it'll split and hit two different cabs. So here's one cab and here's two cabs. One amp going into two cabs, and then obviously this first cab will hit the delay and the bottom cab will hit the reverb and then they will merge together here at the end. But on this split point right here, the only controls that you get are balance A and balance B. So something that you can do is you can say the balance of path A will go to the left of the stereo image and path B will go to the right for the stereo image, or you could just leave it centered. So the next option that you have is split A, B. So how much do you want to go to path A and how much do you want to go to path B? Do you want to prioritize more of path A or do you want to prioritize more of path B? So if you leave this in the middle to even split, it's basically just the same thing as a split Y. But let's say I want to get more into path A. So I want, you know, like 20% more to go to path A and I want a little bit less reverb. I want it to process more of this cab and this delay and a little bit less of this cab and the reverb. I can do that by moving it here or I can say just 100% and it'll skip the bottom path altogether. Next one that you have is split crossover. So anything that goes above this frequency threshold will go to path A and everything below the frequency threshold will go to path B. So if I set this frequency, let's just say to 1000 hertz right now, anything above 1000 hertz will be processed on path A and anything below will be processed on path B. If you do want to reverse it, you just flip this reverse and then they will switch. So now what I could do is I could say I just want all my highs will be processed with delay. But then on the bottom, I want a, like a little bit more distortion. Move this to path B and then move this over. So now on the top, all of the notes above a thousand hertz will go into this cab and hit the delay and the reverb. And then everything below a thousand hertz will get a little bit more distortion. And the last one right here is probably the most creative one. It is split dynamic. So anything below Below the sound level threshold will go to path A. And anytime that you hit hard enough to go over this threshold, you will be processed on B. You have your attack decay and you can also reverse it again. So if you play lightly, it will go on to path A. But if you play heavier and strum heavier, it will go to path B. So when you pick lightly, you want it to be a little bit more clean tone with a nice delay and reverb. And when you pick heavier, you want to add a little bit more distortion and go into a slightly different cabinet. Very creative. Let me know in the comments if you plan to use that. That's a very specific use case. And then I'm going to show you the merge block over here. So this determines how they all merge together. You can turn up path A and path B separately. So say A is too quiet and B is too loud. You can adjust that here. So turn up A and turn down B. You can also pan A and B. So say you want all of path A to go out the left and all of pan B to go out the right. You have that option here. You can flip the polarity of the B path. Most of you won't need that. And you do get just a general level adjustment for all of it. I believe by default, it goes to plus three to compensate for signal loss from signal splitting. But honestly, just always trust your ears on what sounds best. One more thing before we end, I did want to show you if you hit the action on this block right here, you can also move that down to path B. So on the HX stop, it actually sends that out to send left and right, which is this port right here. So now on this top path right here, that's going out the main left and right. And then on this bottom path, it's going out the send and return. Pretty cool. On the Helix, you can do the same thing, move the joystick down, and you can route it to multiple outputs that are available with it. So I do have a video on that for the Helix to process four different instruments all at once on their own paths with separate inputs and separate outputs. I also have a video on how to do this to process two separate inputs and two separate outputs on the HX stomp for mono or stereo input 
inputs. So check out both of those videos by clicking some of the links on your screen now. Just do me a favor, hit the like button if this content helped you out. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm and help my channel grow, so I would appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more music tech quick tips like this in the future.